Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. I have an antenna to look at. As you can see from the thumbnail, this is the Faraday, uh, Faraday cloth J-pole for two meters. And I folded it so all the important parts inside. There you go. This is Faraday cloth. This is conductive cloth. And this is a very long, like 64 inches cloth J-pole antenna for two meters. It's made by uh, VE6SFX Ben over at Ham Radio Rookie, the uh, YouTube channel Ham Radio Rookie. Um, I saw it first uh, on the Tech Minds channel, where uh, Matt M0DQW uh, uh, was doing a review of it. Um, there's also been Josh Ham Radio Crash Course and many others that have done uh, reviews of the antenna and done uh, range testing, comparing it to other commercial uh, J poles. And uh, it works well. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. I'm not going to be do, doing another here it is and let's try it out and it works uh, video. I want to give you a closer look at it. Because uh, when I saw the Tech Minds video, uh, Matt showed a VNA sweep of it. And I'm sure he won't mind me using this clip. I'm going to put his video link in the in the description below. I encourage you to go watch his video and the Ham, Ham Radio Crash Course video with Josh where he did range testing. Go watch his too. I'll put both of those in the in the description. But when Matt showed this VNA sweep, uh, I thought, "Wow, that does not look like a resonant antenna. That's pretty much flat." And he didn't say anything about it. He just kind of like breezed on by. Said, "Here's the VNA sweep," and then he went on to testing. And I'm like, "Hey, <laughs> what's what's going on with that VNA sweep?" Uh, so I want to take a closer look at that and see what's actually going on with the antenna. Um, I also want to give you a close look at the construction of it. Uh, how it's made and uh, this material and and um, and so on. I uh, I did get my meter out and and check the uh, resistance of this uh, from near one end of it to the other end of it, which is like 80 some inches of this this um, quarter inch or three eighths inch tape. So it's not as conductive as copper wire, but it's pretty doggone conductive for a cloth material. That's it's coated. The military, I guess, uses it for um, RFI shielding. So now this is his connector here, and he's got two um, hex head bolts going through. That's how he's making his connection to the PC board. It is glued to give it physical strength, so it's not just relying on those bolts, because that would tear the fabric over time, so that's good. He's glued it. Uh, let's see, this should just show, this should just show, uh, zero ohms. We'll go from the center of the conductor to the shell. Yeah. No trickery going on here. He's just, it should show zero ohms for do a DC short. Yep, exactly. So yeah, that's pretty basic, real simple construction. Interesting material. Let me see if I can get you a macro view of this. So, Ben um, did a pretty good job putting this together. Uh, you know, he glued this PC board on here and it's, it's holding pretty well. But if you went and watched Josh's video, um, and I've seen this in other videos, when they string this guy up uh, in the open air, any breeze at all, and this thing's just flapping like crazy. Just, just, just like crazy. So, I think this is a weak point. Now, Ben did what, the best he could do with the materials he's got. I mean, this PC board is pretty strong. It's glued really well to this cloth. But this is a through-hole PC mount BNC connector. And it's soldered into this PC board. Um, additionally, a BNC connector itself is not the strongest of connectors. So, if you've got, you know, 20 feet or so of coax, that's, that's some weight hanging off of this thing. Uh, and with it up there flapping around in the breeze constantly, over time, I think this is the weak point here. Um, these solder connections might crack just be from the motion. The fabric might begin to tear here or the glue might start to pull away. Uh, and of course, all that weight hanging on your BNC connector uh, and moving around over time is gonna weaken that. I mean, it's fine, you know, right off, but if this is an antenna that you use 
on camping trips or you take to um, soda activations or pota activations, you know, and every other weekend or every weekend, or maybe a couple of times a week, you've got this thing hanging up, flapping around in the breeze. Over time, this is going to fail. So I made something to go on the end of it here. Let me show you this strain relief that I made. Let's go back to the bench. This is the neat, neat little uh, tie-down clamp that he had on the end of the Farrah J. Which is nicely done. It's 3D printed. It's got these little teeth in there. I like this design. It's really nice. Ben, I don't know if you designed this or not, but if you did, good job. And probably not fun to print with those. You have to put some supports in there. Well, anyway. Um, so, BNC connector. And now on this end, here's my clamp design, by the way, in the 3D. Um, I did it in FreeCAD, which I'm learning. And here it is in real life. So, let me uh, give you a closer view here. This is the main body of it. And this is the little clamp piece that you saw in the design. It goes on the back. These are uh, M3 by 8 millimeter screws, but you could find anything in your junk box that fits. But these fit real nice and come up flush to the end here. So that's the clamp body. And this is the clip that clips on in these slots to hold your coax. I'll turn it right side up here. And you can see there's a little channel here for the coax, and the clip has a channel here. And this is sized for RG58, which I think is probably the size that most people are going to be using. So I've got my coax and my BNC connector here, and I'm going to connect that onto the antenna. And then, down at this end, I'm going to take the clip, and I'm going to put it in here. But I'm not going to clip it all the way in yet. I'm just going to get it started. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the strap taut. And I've got a little too much there, a little too much slack. I'm going to pull that back a bit. I'm just going to get a little bit of slack in the coax. See that? Just a little bit of slack in there with the, with the strap taut. And then I'm going to push this clip in until it clicks. There, it clicked. So now it's in there, and that coax is held tight. It's not moving anywhere. All of the load is going to be taken up by the strap. You can see there's still some slack there in the, in the coax, even though I'm putting a solid load on it. So that's the little fixture I made that will take the load off of this connector, PC board, and screws, and probably extend the life of all that. And also, then your coax becomes your anchor for the bottom of the antenna, which is fine. So there you go. So anyway, um, let's go to the uh, let's go to the well. Let's let's hang it up outside and let's do a VNA sweep of it and let's take a good look at that and see what's going on with this thing. I'll be hanging the Farrah J up in place of my Slim Jim window line J pole, which I'll also be comparing it to in sweeps and performance. So first off, the uh, window line Slim Jim is a good example of a resonant antenna. As you can see from the SWR curve, we have a nice curve. It's centered around uh, the middle of the two meter band. Now let's uh, take a look at the Faraday, which is up and flapping in the breeze. So the Faraday sweep, first off, is a little high in frequency. It looks like a resonant antenna with a nice curve, but it is centered up at 150 megahertz. Now it's, it's tricky getting these things right with the J-poles. You can move that connection point a couple of millimeters and shift the frequency quite a bit. So in mass producing these things, um, he's, he's getting close. And it's close enough. If we look at the bottom edge of two meters there, the Faraday is a little bit broader uh, in bandwidth, a little bit lower Q, which you would think would normally mean poorer performance, but we know it performs well. But if we look at the bottom of two meters here um, at 144 megahertz, we're still at an SWR of only 1.55 to 1. So well within the usable range across two meters. And I'm sure that each one of these that he makes is going to vary slightly in frequency, but it'd be close enough to be fine on two meters. Sorry about the handheld cell phone video. So I had to do at least one uh, range test. So I've got my ICOM 705 on a local repeater that is seven miles away. I have the power set to zero. Can you see that? Zero percent. So the 705 is putting out about 150 milliwatts. And right now it is hooked up to my Slim Jim. 
KB9 RLW doing an antenna test. 150 milliwatts into a Slim Jim. KB9 RLW clear. Okay. Now over on the computer, I have GQRX recording from an antenna that's some distance away. So it's only hearing the repeater audio. And we'll be able to listen to the results. Now let me go out and switch to the Faraday, Faraday, and I'll do the test again. This is KB9 RLW doing an antenna test. 150 milliwatts into a Slim Jim. KB9 RLW clear. KB9 RLW testing. 150 milliwatts into a Faraday antenna. I have one last test to perform, and I was asking about rain, what happens when it gets wet. So I've got it soaking in a cup of water, except for the content connector, of course. See, the connector's out of here. The rest of it's been soaking in this water, so it is very wet. <laughs> All right, let's hang it up and sweep it. Yep, that is one very damp antenna. Okay, it's up there. Now I got my blue mini VNA hooked up to it. Let's see what we see, huh? Two meters for our sweep. Okay, you're not gonna be able to see that because of the sun, but I will screenshot it. The SWR shot up to 3.2 to 1 in 2 meters. And remember before it was showing resonant around 150 megahertz. SWR is 2.87. So that's a closer look at the Faraday. Um, I think it's a good antenna. If you were packing this for, you know, a trip, soda, par, uh, poda, just camping for the weekend, it rolls up pretty darn small and it's not very heavy at all. I mean, you've still got the weight of your you know, length of coax that you're gonna bring, but you're gonna have that in either, either way regardless. So, you know, I think as a portable J-pole antenna goes, it's really well made. It's um, very light. It appears to be quite durable. I don't know what the life expectancy is of this stuff as it gets, you know, kinked and bent and removed and moved around. I don't know if that conductive material is gonna flake off over time or not, maybe not. Um, I think it's a it's a good antenna. I'm impressed with it. So thanks Ben for sending me a couple of these I'll play around with them some more in the future and if I have further thoughts, I'll share them Hope you found that interesting and we'll see you in the next video Thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up Also, if you're not already a subscriber click to subscribe Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos and if you'd like to help support this channel Please click to support me on my patreon page